Pat Robertson ranted about movies and entertainment on his show last night, and I wanted to play this for you because this is such a clear example of how he's stuck in the year 1953 and how he's fundamentally anti-human nature. Watch. It is difficult to find books, TV shows, and movies that do not have street language, sex, or blasphemy. Is it a sin to watch or read the modern day media? Uh, look, if you don't see some of these things, you'd have to leave the world. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the world is saturated with sexual innuendos. I mean, good grief. How many ads for Victoria's Secret do you have to look at? How many of these things are out there? I mean, that's the whole idea is to have scantily clad models selling products, whether it's toasters or automobiles or, or insurance. I mean, they're out there. And so the, the, the Bible says, I think it's the 101st Psalm, you read it. He said, I've, I've set no vile thing before my eyes. Yeah. And there are some things that are really vile. And the answer is you shouldn't be watching them. But the fact that they, there are about, oh, 200 screenwriters in Hollywood who have the dominance in the media, and they're doing everything they possibly can to put dirty language and sexual situations, and now homosexuality, into scripts over and over and over again. Now, you could just say, well, turn that mess off and not watch, or you can watch Christian television, or you can go out and take runs in the country. I, I don't know. You, it takes a little more work, but you can find a lot of good movies. I, I have been fortunate to find a lot. I love to watch movies, and so I've found well, some really great they're, they're, movies. They're, they've got a ranking system, uh, you know, yeah. uh, PG and, and, we, and yeah. so on. If you get the R, you're going to get the know, language. We had a sweet little lady here. I mean, she's like a little grandmother. And she writes the romance novel. Yeah. You know, and it, but she said every, it's a formula, and every uh, 10 pages, you got to have a sex scene. Mm -hmm. And this little, this little grandmother's, <laughs> you know, and her, <laughs> oh, she was breathing hard, and he grabbed her, you know. I had to, uh, but anyhow, she had to put that in her box because the publisher said, you've got to have, it, have it in order to sell the stuff. Anyhow, as we live in a, in a corrupt world, and until the Lord comes back, it's going to be difficult to live in it. But be in the world, but not of the world. All Amen. Right. Amen. No more fun, Pat. No more fun. Yes. Imagine living in the world that they want. The world that is their ideal. That world is the Leave it to Beaver world. That world is, well, no cussing on the tube, Pa. Lassie's on his way home. Oh, careful. Don't let the camera zoom in on Lassie's butt. Somebody might get horny in America. Oh, is that a nipple I see through your shirt? Oh, my pants fit weird. I mean, the world that they want to live in is a world where everything is sanitized and nobody's telling the truth and nobody's being honest. Now, I get it. Are there some rules and some standards that should be in place in, in terms of protecting kids from things that are purely adult entertainment? Absolutely. I'm fine with, you know, certain things, drawing certain lines, just in terms of making sure kids don't see uh, overtly sexual things in a way where it, it can be viewed as an imposition and kind of like a, a, a sexual assault on them simply by virtue of the fact that they're watching it and they're witness to it. I get it, and I think everybody gets it, that you don't want hardcore porn on the channel next to the TV Guide Network, of, I'm sorry, uh, Cartoon Network, available for everybody, okay? You don't want that, and I get that. But outside of having some minor rules to stop the worst abuses from kids seeing overtly sexual shit in the middle of the day near Cartoon Network, outside of that, it's like, stop. I want to live in a free society. I want to have access to all this stuff if I want it and when anybody wants it. Because we're adults. We're human beings. Guess what? As human beings, sometimes you get horny. Sometimes you want to have sex. Sometimes you want to look at porn. Sometimes you want to engage in adult things. You want to drink a beer. You want to smoke some weed. You want to do X, Y, or Z. Things that are adult things, okay? And for them to act like, well, no, we should sanitize the society and make it just like the only things that we want. Well, that's 1953, and that's Leave it to Beaver, and that's Lassie, and that is not entertaining. I'm sorry, but when they go on about how, well, producers are forcing 
dirty lines into movies and violence and sex and, you know, they're doing it. It's nefarious. They're forcing the gays into movies. Okay. They're for yes, they're forcing. No, see, but that's the point. There's no forcing going on. That's what sells. That's what's entertaining. As human beings, it is only natural for us to want to see other human beings naked, want to see other human beings in situations we wouldn't want to be in, whether it's a car chase or a violent, uh, you know, uh, shootout in a movie with whatever, cowboys and Indians, or cowboys and Indians, that was weird. <laughs> With uh, Steven Seagal in 1992. Okay, that's also weird. You know what I mean. Liam Neeson, even though he's 86 years old. I mean, that's what people want to see shit like that. That's what sells because that's what's natural. And that leads to the main point, which I mentioned before the clip. He's fundamentally anti-human nature. Like, that's the thing. You'll notice this is one of the things that runs through every single major world religion. Okay, actually, that's not fair because me. Eh, no, it is in Buddhism too, actually. Most, either way, I'll say this, just to be safe. Most major world religions, th there's a consistent theme. You're flawed the way you are, your human nature is evil and bad, and you need to fight against it. Whether it's sexually, whether it's otherwise, the idea is be ashamed, repent for it, to separate yourself from it, okay? This is what you see in uh, fundamentalist Islam, fundamentalist Christianity, fundamentalist Judaism, in Buddhism. They try to separate yourself from all your desires and your passions as if that's possible. Be above it all and just be Zen where you are. Yeah, and ride a unicorn over a rainbow. I mean, come on, man. Let's be serious here. Uh, so that's the main thing that you see through all the world religions, but this is why secular humus humanists need to step in and they say... All right, guys, that's bullshit. There's nothing wrong with the fact that you get horny sometimes. There's nothing wrong with the fact that you want to have a beer sometimes. There's nothing wrong with the fact that you want to see a, an action movie where people are racing cars at 87 miles an hour and shooting at each other. Totally natural, totally normal. There's something innate in you or biological in you that leads you in that direction, and to be ashamed of it makes no sense. Of course, we're saying don't do violent crimes in real life, but you already know that. The same way... Video games don't lead to violence. Movies don't lead to violence. You know, if you watch a porn scene, you don't automatically go out and try to sexually assault somebody. Obviously, separate what's entertainment from the real world, but you already know that. So, there's nothing to be ashamed of, and to try to force yourself to live in this sanitized world is not an ideal, but they think it is.